what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and during this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Cherry Swiss version 4.7 and this is the 12th April 2023 build of course based on Android 13 comes with two separate versions one includes the gapps and one doesn't and I have of course flashed the gapps included variant here and I'm gonna be honest here after flashing this ROM I have to say this is one of the best ROMs till date I feel personally for the Redmi Note 10 Pro I'll tell you the reasons but first of all let me show you the about section this is how it looks like it shows the wallpaper that you're using then it shows the Cherry OS version it is 4.7 and of course this is the official release the maintainer is jyr underscore rc so huge thanks to the developers of this rom and we have the android version is 13 we have the specs listed then we are also getting the latest security patch as of right now that is april 2023 and that's awesome we have the 4.14 against kernel as the default kernel here and we get the its next status showing as enforcing in the system settings this is how it looks like on the bottom here we get the sweet parts and in here you can change the refresh rate of the display of course i have been using it with the all day 120 hertz kind of feature and we have this refresh rate profiles per app you can change it to 60 90 or even 120 let me go back from here we have the dc dimming right here in the thermal profiles you can set per apps thermal profiles to these many options let me go back we have the me sound enhancer as well in here we have these u and stuff and all these presets you can choose from we have the sound preset as well bass booster bass reduction everything is there then we also have the sound scenario and we have this enable hi-fi audio option in the clear speaker option of course if your speaker sounds muffled you can clear it out we do get a system updater and if you check for updates there will be newer updates appearing over here whenever there is a new one of course and this shows as the is version 4.7 in the gesture settings we have the quick tap actions and you can set it to these many options then we have the quickly open camera and stuff then the system navigation gestures in the settings of it we have the pill length the IME button space and the narrow hidden etc customization but let me tell you this like pill bar shows up whenever you are opening something there is no space it just fills up this area let me actually show you if I scroll as you can see it fills up a lot more towards the UI I don't know if there should be a black border or something but yeah this is how it is we have the swipe to invoke assistant that is also working perfectly fine left edge right edge customization fill radius and the amount of screen height to be used for the back gesture two button three button navigation everything is there no need to worry about it then we have the one-handed mode as well that works fine we have the press and hold power button action let me go back the swipe to screenshot is also working perfectly fine there is the share edit delete and the google lens feature also the capture mode appears whenever it's needed then we have the playback control and the prevent ringing option talking about the home screen this is how it looks like and by the way this is a let me actually show you the about section as you can see it is a pixel launcher there is no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen but there is the station disabling option if you are in a need of that let me go back and to the left of the home screen we do get the google's discover page and scrolling on it it's working perfectly fine no issues swiping up will get you to the app drawer and you can search for any particular app no issues with that and swiping down will get you to the quick setting panel the good thing is the quick setting panel stays white in the light theme that is what i like over here the battery widget yes it is there and it is working perfectly fine and let me show you the animations of this looks beautiful i would say as you can see no issues whatsoever with the animations of android 13 and even the weather and the clock widget etc are working perfectly fine you do not need to worry about them and talking about the quick setting panel again we have the power menu right here on the bottom and you can just click on advanced you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here if you have enabled the advanced reboot and here we have the toggles you can edit and add even more toggles if you want let me show you what i have i have the wi-fi mobile data the bluetooth toggle the flashlight dark theme auto rotate and other things like the battery saver google home controls etc let me show you we have the night light and the refresh rate toggle the screen recorder and stuff is there and there is the hevc option for the screen recording if you need that then we have the ambient display the sound toggle heads up reboot toggle and the volume panel then the always on display toggle is also there then the dolby atmos the me sound enhancer toggle the do not disturb nearby share airplane mode and the data saver everything is there almost and the dc dimming toggle is kind of missing but of course you can enable it from that system settings and talking about flashing this rom yes i have flashed it with the latest 13.0.10 firmware i'm not really sure if it's totally needed 
but yeah i have flashed it with that and if you don't know how to flash this drum you can check out the flashing guide in the description don't need to worry about it so this i took in the portrait mode and just notice the quality is great the background bouquet is awesome and even in the info section you can see it's a 16 megapixel photo so the optimization for the portrait kind of selfies and stuff and even the rear camera pictures are awesome no issues but yes this is the latest MIUI camera that you are getting over here lens switching option over here it is the newer kind of buttons and it has this ultra wide angle lens working perfectly fine the one x or the main sensor is of course working fine and 2x telephoto zooming option is working great in the video settings we have up to 4k 30 fps over here even the super macro lens if you want to see that it is working perfectly fine there is a documents mode and stuff and in the enhanced option you can use it and in the pro mode you can shoot pro mode videos up to 4k 30 fps too by controlling white balance focus shutter speed iso etc and even if you swipe up you will get more options like the vlog mode slow motion and everything else like the dual video and stuff all these things all these functionalities should be working great so miui camera the latest miui camera present by default here and that's awesome it has the google dialer and it has all the features like recording call and stuff the other options like video call and faulty calling is working perfectly fine no need to worry about it and you can switch the bluetooth devices and stuff from right here right now i'm going to show you the customizations of this room well this is how the settings panel looks like by the way if you want to skip the customization part you can definitely do that with the timestamps and here in the cherry settings this is how it looks it has plenty of customizations in the status bar we have the status bar double tap to sleep background chip the network traffic indicator the battery icon style you can change it between these many options just notice how many of them are there i have been using it with the landscape art style a and the battery percentage i have it on the next to the icon right and the battery for the quick setting panel you can of course change the battery icon and stuff and we have the clock style you can change it to left right or center i don't know how it will look in the center there is a front camera but yeah we have the clock and date and we have this small and the date kind of customization i have already done that that's why the date and time looks like this for me with the background chip and all and we have the status bar icons in here we have the headset bluetooth etc kind of icons and also the vaulty icon shows up no issues and we have the voyy icon as well if you have enabled vo wi-fi then it should be appearing but i have been using just vaulty not vo wi-fi and we have the small mobile type icon the 4g icon and the mic camera privacy icon show notification count and stuff the colored icons you can enable there is a bluetooth battery stats you can enable or disable it depending on your liking in the quick settings we have this transparency mode you can actually change it quick pull down is also there you can change it between like right left etc the brightness slider you can have it on show always even the position you can have it on bottom that's why it will look like this we have the auto brightness the data usage and the vertical layout is also there you can enable it if you want for the quick setting panel in the theme section we have this layout changing option AOSP oxygen is 11 or 12 cherries and cherries clean options are there we also have this alternative kind of settings based layout and the home screen layout i guess and we have this user card etc in the dark theme of course there is the scheduling option by the way these toggles if you're noticing it looks a little bit different to me and we have the lock screen clock font you can change it from right here there is plethora of lock screen clock fonts and we have the quick setting panel changing option as well and you can have it on this outline style and stuff and this is how it will look with the outline quick setting styles but there is even more options like the cyberpunk thin line etc options you can definitely use them if you want let me show you yeah it definitely looks cool there is also the vivid colors you can enable it if you want for the pitch black kind of theme and stuff you can definitely use this one as well and we have the headline and body fonts even plethora of fonts are here like samsung and stuff then the oneplus sans etc the nothing dot font everything is there no need to worry about it the icon packs are here icon shapes are there as well signal icon styles i have been using it with a wavy and the wi-fi icon styles i have been using it with a wavy as well in the button section we have the system nav gestures again and in here you can customize that and we have the show volume panel on the left side the volume steps is there and you can customize it some people do like it we do have this volume rocker wake and the keyboard cursor control let me go back we have the animations in here we have the power menu animation style you can change the power menu appearing animation animation style of the ui you can customize from right here in the lock screen we have the double tap to sleep long press power button toggle torch and the hide power menu on lock screen for privacy then we have the show charging info in lock screen ripple effect and we have the fingerprint authentication and error vibration 
media covered the pulse and the blood amount for the lock screen media in the power menu we have this power menu opacity and the advanced reboot and stuff you can enable we have the notifications in here we have the edge lighting the show always option is there and the light color you can change it and we have this ambient aod customization there's the ambient text and stuff you can change the colors if you want there is also the make heads up list annoying noisy notification of screen on then the reticker color button and the toast app icons then we also have the in-call vibrations over here. In the miscellaneous settings, we have the launch music up on headset connect, ignore windows secure flags. If you scroll down more, we have the smart charging as well. Let me go back. We have the app lock right here and it goes straight into it. It doesn't ask you for the fingerprint and stuff. So that's how it is. And we can enable the like apps, whichever you want to lock. There is also auto lock timeout and this enable biometrics for unlocking option. We have the smart pixels as well. You can enable the smart pixels if you want. There is a burn in protection. Let me go back. We have the unlock higher FPS in games, unlimited Google photo storage and the click to take partial screenshot. All these options are here. So that is pretty much it about the customizations. Now let me show you the display settings. In here we have the brightness level and it does look like this whenever you click on it and it looks like this on the quick setting panel by the way. And if you change that quick setting panel styles, even the notifications kind of things are changing. Like this thin line kind of look has appeared even on the notification panel. Looks really cool I would say. Now let me show you in the lock screen we have this allow face unlock when swiping up on lock screen you can customize that then we have this control from lock device even the shortcuts you can enable and change i'll show you that from the lock screen later on and we have the double line clock always show time and info ambient music ticker wake screen for notifications the advanced settings i cannot really go into it for some reason let me go back we have the screen timeout you can set it up to 30 minutes then we have the dark theme show ruling option and enabling option screen saver option is also there and we have the display size and text in here you can enable this high contrast text if you want then if you scroll down more, we have the night light, the live display, and there is the color calibration mode. You can enable the RGB control, even the picture adjustment you can definitely do from right here. There is also the reading mode, which turns the display into the grayscale kind of mode. Let me go back. We have the colors. You can set it to saturated or boosted depending on your liking. And we have the allow window level blurs, screen protector mode to increase the sensitivity. If you have a tempered glass, I would say just enable this one. And we have the double tap to wake, prevent external wake up, wake up on plug and the full screen apps option is there you can force particular apps to full screen in the wallpapers and styles you can change the wallpapers from right here there is the living universe and stuff you can download these live wallpapers the come alive options are also there but again i have been using it with the wallp app we have 16 colors for the wallpaper and basic colors there is the dark theme the themed icons even the app grid you can change up to five by five let's talk about the battery settings this is one of my favorite parts because in here i get almost everything to see if you just scroll down more we have the design battery capacity the current battery capacity also shows up the charging cycle and from this rom i can get to see that i have gone through about 268 charging cycles my device is getting a little old but yeah, i can definitely track the charging cycles with this particular rom which i couldn't do with most roms earlier so this one is my favorite till date because it has the charging cycles and the battery temperature of course does show up over here no issues we have the battery charge warning and stuff then the adaptive preference the battery life i'm getting over here is amazing i have been getting almost estimated for about about 8 hours and 47 minutes or you can say 9 hours of screen on time and with this I would say one of the best battery lives that I have been getting but yes this is all estimated numbers even the screen off you can see it's about 57 hours so that's almost 60 hours you can say so it will definitely give you a whole day of usage no issues and in the health section 84% battery health yes that has increased from that <laughs> me why that I have flashed so definitely I would say the battery life that I have been getting is amazing and the fast charging and stuff should be working perfectly fine. No need to worry about it. In the sound and vibration settings, we have the media call ring, etc. Volume controls, the do not disturb, the phone ringtone and stuff. And we have the adaptive sound, vibration and haptics. You can enable it for the touch feedback as well if you like them. And the pattern of the ringtone vibration you can change. Let me scroll down more. We have the per app volume control. Then the dial pad tone, screen locking sound, etc. Always show icon when vibrate mode and stuff. All these things. But actually, let me show you the volume panel. This is how it looks like. Yes, I have enabled everything. That's why it looks so much cluttered over here on the bottom. But let me show you one by one what are these. So this one is to expand the volume panel just like this. And you can put the phone into vibrate or silent from right here. The next one is for the app volume. And the 
other one is to actually switch the output device and expand the full volume panel i guess so yeah right now it is not showing up for some reason but yeah it does show up over here it has the android 14 kind of animations i would say and here if i just click on play just notice that flow over here whenever you're clicking on play or pause button this particular flow is there because of the newer kind of animation i think from android 13 or 14 not really sure some people are saying it's from android 14 but yeah and here as you can see there is the output device switching option it works perfectly fine no issues and i can definitely switch to the bluetooth device as well from right here and the player and pause icon definitely looks awesome in the security settings we have the quick unlock and stuff and the scramble pin layout etc i have already added the face and the fingerprints and in the more settings of course we are gonna get the app locks now let me show you by just double tapping on the status bar Yes, it does go into the sleep completely because I have the always on display disabled. So yeah, this is how it looks like. The lock screen clock, of course, I have customized it, but the double tap to wake and stuff, everything is working fine, no issues. And here, the lock screen shortcuts, if I show you, I have to touch and hold on it. And as you can see, it works perfectly fine. Even for the torch, as you can see, it is working perfectly fine. So all these things definitely works. Now let me show you the face unlock first. If I just swipe up on the lock screen, as you can see, it is recognizing my face and it has unlocked. And once you're using the front camera, there is that black border. So it will help you while you are doing a video call or something. It won't give you a halo effect on your screen. Now let me show you the finger scanner speed. And yeah, that actually works perfectly fine. The speed is super fast. No issues whatsoever with the finger scanner. It does give you a haptic feedback and it unlocks. Even the animations are very smooth. No issues whatsoever that you will face. Even the app lock, let me show you a lock tap. And here, this is how the app lock looks like. And if you tap the fingerprint scanner, as you can see, it has unlocked and went into the page where I was earlier. So the RAM management over here is awesome. Even in the recent panel, there is the split top mode and stuff you can use. There is a screenshot, the select option. If you go all the way to the left, you can clear all the apps from right here. Talking about basic things, yes, it does pass safety net test right out of the box. I have been using banking apps, no problems that I have faced so far. In the DRM Info app, it shows the security level as L1, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p without any problems. Even the IR Bluster works perfectly fine here, no need to worry about it. And in the Google Photos backup section, you can see it is supporting the unlimited Google Photos storage, so no issues whatsoever with that. I would say this is definitely giving me one of the best performances that I have seen on the Redmi Note 10 Pro. 120Hz all day long is working perfectly fine, even like browsing through the UI and browsing web. Even on Twitter and stuff, the scrolling is perfectly fine, I would say. No issues whatsoever. Just notice how smoothly it's scrolling. So yeah, I did not face any issues whatsoever with scrolling or even daily driving. The performance overall is amazing. And you can see the Android and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build to get you an idea about the whole device performance. So definitely, in my opinion, the Cherry OS with all these features is one of the best and one of my favorites till date for the Redmi Note 10 Pro. It has the MIUI camera, the latest one. It has the light kind of quick sending panel. It has the safety net working. The Google Photos gets unlimited storage. Banking apps work perfectly fine. Includes the battery charging cycle, which I could not see in most ROMs earlier. So all these features does make this ROM a unique option. So definitely I can recommend you flashing this. Latest Cherry OS comes with the April security patch and stuff. The version 4.7 of Cherry OS is really, I have to say, one of the best that I have ever tried on the Redmi Note 10 Pro. So give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. Please share this video with your friends if you want them to know about this ROM. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.